and welcome to the third part of the OFDM lecture. So now we will move on to an example of the use of DFT. So we consider a case with circular convolution where this is the channel with two taps. The input is this um, with period four. So I guess this part is not correct. And then I would ask you to write down the input-output relationship and then the DFT matrix for this case and then con consider the DFTs of the X, Y and H. Let's do that. So the DFT matrix is given by this expression, which you can easily verify. Um, if you then take the input and output and you apply in MATLAB the FFT and divide by square root of n, you will find the DFTs. So this is then DFT of x and DFT of y. You can similarly compute, compute the DFT of h, and this turns out to be this vector here. And now what you see is that the DFT of y, which is this one, is the DFT of x times the DFT of the channel times square root of four, which is two. So you see this relationship appearing directly. You can also verify that this DFT of the channel is related to the um, diagonalization of the circle matrix corresponding to the channel. So this is the circle matrix corresponding to the channel. You diagonalize it and then you find two times the DFT of H, so two times this vector. So it's a good example to try in MATLAB. Now we will start putting everything together. So what we really know right now is that when we have circular convolution, um, we can create, we can convert, let's see, we can convert the convolution to parallel data streams. So this means that we can convert ISI to a scenario without ISI by applying a Fourier transform. Now, the problem is that we don't really want circular transmission. We don't want periodic transmission. We don't want to send the same thing over and over again. And to address this, we have, well, a concept has been invented, which is called the cyclic prefix. So let's suppose that you have a, a channel of a certain length, L plus one, and then you have the, your input sequence of length N, and then we will define something called the cyclic prefix of length N. For example, when we have three taps and the, and the duration, the capital N is 10, this is what we will actually send over the channel. So our N symbols are here. This is this part. And what we want is we want, well, you write it down. We want that the receiver thinks we sent these n symbols symbols periodically. Right, so we keep sending these n symbols over and over and over. Then you've created a circular convolution, which means that at the receiver side, you can do a, a DFT and recover your n symbols without any intersymbol interference. Now, to, to make the receiver think this, to trick the receiver, what we do is we copy the last um, L symbols and put them before our transmission. Okay. And then what we actually send is this. So we we're sending N plus L symbols. So what happens now at the receiver? The receiver now thinks we've done a cir circular convolution. So what the receiver sees, it's for each of these um, N plus L transmitted symbols, it will have an observation. So for instance, for the symbol at time zero, so we're sending this guy at time zero, there's an observation at time zero which we write explicitly here. So it is the channel at delay zero, this input at time zero, the channel at time one and the input at time minus one. And this is what we copied from before and so forth, right? So we have the channel times input and then we have the copies of what we sent before. Similarly, the input at time one leads to an output at time one given by this expression we again see appearing these previous symbols. 
So now if the receiver just looks at the observations from 0 to n minus 1, it appears as though there is a circular convolution. So just these observations correspond to the observations the receiver would see if the transmitter sent these n symbols over and over and over again. So the receiver sees this as a circular convolution. It can then apply a DFT to the observation vector, and then you have this. Okay, so the observation in the frequency domain is squared of n times the Fourier transform of these axes times the Fourier transform of the channel. So again, by introducing this cyclic prefix, we make the receiver think that we've sent these n symbols over and over and over again. And if the receiver just samples these or just takes these n observations here, creates a big vector, this vector satisfies the circular convolution. Of course, we didn't send the same thing over and over again. We just tricked the receiver by putting the cyclic prefix there. So then this becomes the OFDM transmitter. We have our bits coming in. We map them to, for instance, QAM symbols. Okay. And then with this, um, then we want to send these at a certain rate. So this is then 1 over TS. We create a vector. We create vectors of length n of these symbols. So if I were to draw a picture, let's see. So these are the symbols, let's say, of length n, another block of length n, another block of length n. And these are these symbols x. Then what the transmitter does, it takes one block of these, right? puts them here, and then computes an IFFT to give me time domain samples. So the, the QAM data symbols that you're sending, you should interpret them as being in a mathematical frequency domain. You then apply an IFFT, and then this brings them to mathematically a time domain. And this is what you will then later send over the channel. After that, you will do the same with the next block of N QAM symbols, put them here, apply an FFT, IFFT, and so forth. Okay, after the IFFT, you will add a cyclic prefix, and then you send over the channel. So this sending over the channel means that you have digital to analog conversion, op conversion, and then you send it. So that means that for each OFDM symbol, you will send n plus the length of the cyclic prefix samples. And if your original rate was here 1 over TS, that means that for n symbols coming in, you will use n plus CP samples. So the rate is reduced a little bit based on the cyclic prefix overhead. And you can interpret each of these streams as have as a basically low rate stream, a one end of the original rate. Now for low complexity, you want n to be power of two. And then the cyclic prefix overhead, you don't want this to be too large, right? Because it reduces the rate because you need to send more kind of complex numbers than you have symbols that you want to send here. It takes some power. And, but you, on the other hand, you need to send it high enough to make sure that you don't have intersymbol interference. So this means this cyclic prefix length must be long enough with respect to the duration of the channel. If you make it too short, you will have intersymbol interference between successive OFDM symbols. So this is what the transmitter looks like. Let's now go to the receiver. So the signal goes over the channel. We down convert, low pass filter, and a sample. And here we need to make sure that when we sample that the delay spread of the channel should be at most CP plus one TS. So before this CP plus one was an L plus one TS, and then the cyclic prefix was equal to length L a few slides ago. If this is satisfied, then we will not have any intersymbol interference. After sampling, we have observations yn. So this creates, let's see if I can draw this. So at the transmitter side, we had these blocks of n symbols. Right? n, n, n. We sent each one at one at a time. At the receiver side, for each of these n symbols, there will be the cyclic prefix. And again, cyclic prefix, a block, cyclic prefix, a block. 
So this is the first block. Then this is the first block with cyclic prefix. Second block of end symbols, second block with a cyclic prefix CP. Good. So the receiver samples these, removes the cyclic prefix because you don't use it. It's just a way to trick the receiver into thinking there's a circular convolution. And then you line up all the observations in a long vector of length n. You apply an FFT and then you get a vector in the frequency domain again of length n. Then later you process the green OFDM symbol, gives you another vector of length n, process it and so forth. You uh, do parallel to serial conversion to the output here and then do demodulation. So you make decisions on the data symbols based on these y's. Um, there are two constraints. So one is that the delay spread must be short enough with respect to the cyclic prefix or the cyclic prefix should be long enough with respect to the delay spread. And the second one is that the channel should be constant during one OFDM symbol. The reason for that is that if you recall your observation Right, it will be something like this, where I have here a circulant channel plus noise. So this was a circulant channel where each row is a cyclic shift of the previous row. But if the channel is changing, that means the first row and the cyclic shift of the second row or the cyclic shift of the first row and the second row will not be correct. There will be some small deviations. And the further I go, the more and more deviations there will be. So this means that you don't longer have a circulant um, observation and then you will have intersymbol interference. But again, if the channel is constant during, the OF, during each of the M symbol, what the receiver then sees on the i subcarrier, let's say subcarrier zero, is square root of n times what was transmitted on that subcarrier times a complex number, which is the channel on that subcarrier. And these axes here or exactly these axes here from the frequency domain that you sent. Okay, so again, the transmitted data is in the frequency domain, is converted to time domain, sent over the channel. At the receiver side, you sample, remove the cyclic prefix, and take the time domain samples, convert them back to frequency domain samples, and in the frequency domain, you have this um, equation. So this is all in the, let me call it, mathematical frequency domain. Um, now, it's kind of clear that when I said here you can do quantity modulation, you can actually do much smarter things, right? You can do um, water filling. So deterministic water filling, if you know the channel at the, at the transmitter, you can also use it for diversity. So you can send the same symbol over multiple subcarriers. So this OFDM scheme is very powerful, can really harness the techniques from the previous lectures. Um, good, then we have two examples. So. The first one, um, I, uh, maybe I, I will skip this one, but let's look at the other question. So can you prove that the noise after the DFT is white? Uh, because we will remove cyclic prefix and then apply an FFT. Is the noise that we have here still white? Because if it's colored, that means it's correlated among subcarriers. We, we cannot process each subcarrier separately. And then secondly, what happens when all the data symbols are equal? How does things look then in the time domain? So you can think about this and at the same time we will take a break and come back soon.